It's been nearly 50 years since Israel fought its first and also last all-out war with Arab states. When the Yom Kippur War broke out, Israel had already become an undeclared nuclear state, and it was the first test case of the impact of Israel's nuclear deterrence on the regional conflict. When you introduce nuclear into regional conflict, it changed totally the strategic. It's a game changer. For decades, Dr. Dan Sagir has been researching Israel's policy of ambiguity regarding its undeclared nuclear program. In a new book, Dimona, Israel's Nuclear Deterrence, Sagir outlines for the first time how it influenced not only Israeli decision-making over the years, but also Arab leaders when facing Israel, like the leaders of Egypt and Syria in the 70s. The historian knows today that uh, Sadat and Assad in 70, October 73 planned a limited war to get back the territories that they lost 67. No more, no less. However, we figure out and we heard later that Sadat was fully aware to Israel's nuclear capabilities. We even have some evidence about it from various sources, which I mention in the book. One of those was former President Shimon Peres, who in one of his last interviews described an exchange between then-Deputy Prime Minister Yigael Yadin and Egyptian President Anwar Sadat when Yadin came to the airport to pick up the Arab leader on his historic 1977 visit to Israel. On the way to Jerusalem, Yadin asked Sadat, why didn't you advance past the Mitla? Why didn't you advance past Ashkelon? Sadat replied, you have nuclear weapons. Haven't you heard? Since the 1960s, multiple Arab states have tried and failed to establish an Arab bomb in response to Israel's undeclared capabilities. And with Egypt abandoning its own nuclear program and then signing a peace deal with Israel in 1979, the next challenge for Jerusalem came further east, from Iraq. Saddam Hussein started a nuclear program of his own. And Israel, for the first time, found itself in a challenge by an Arab leader who developed a program of himself. In the book, Sagir reveals never-before-seen protocols of cabinet meetings which show how the war-prone dictator was deterred by Israel's nuclear posture and how it prevented Iraq and other Arab states from initiating wars against Israel. And when the Arabs start mobilizing, Israel is going to tell them, we will hit you with an atomic bomb. That's Saddam Hussein said. So should the Arabs stop or not? If they did have the atom themselves, they will stop. For that reason, we should have the atom. For the past half a century, Israel's adopted a unique model of deterrence in the Arab-Israeli conflict, which Sagir coins as multi-layer deterrence. That's a combination of conventional deterrence, such as armies as an answer to strategic threats, and nuclear deterrence for existential threats. That, along with the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT, helped Israel maintain its status as a sole nuclear power in the region, according to foreign reports. But Israel's monopoly in that field is being challenged. Israel has nuclear arsenal factories. You're using nuclear weapons against nations and humans. In the world, you're using chemical weapons during the Iraq war. Who are you to cast doubt on Iran's nuclear activities? Sagir says that the world should begin preparing for a nuclear Iran, but emphasizes that despite repeated alarmist rhetoric by Israeli leaders, it's not currently an existential threat and not only an Israeli problem. Israel has, according to foreign sources, second strike capability through submarine, Dolphin submarine, that we purchase, that Israel purchased from Germany and install nuclear uh, missile there. So any threat on Tel Aviv, uh, immediately it's a threat on Iran. So nobody will dare do it.